Hi, my name is Jeff Miller. I'm the Chief Executive and Chief Scientific Officer of InVivoScribe, an international ecosystem of cutting-edge biotechnology companies focused on advancing precision medicine. In my role, I'm privileged to lead an extraordinary international team of scientists, clinicians, laboratory technologists, software engineers, data scientists, and business professionals all working as a team to accelerate access to the best treatments for oncology patients worldwide. Here's the agenda for today's presentation. First, I'll give a brief overview of our companies, then describe how we define the InVivoScribe ecosystem. I'll provide an overview of some of the current clinical and research tests, then identify some of the tests and technologies that we have in development, and finally, Describe some of our capabilities in software, artificial intelligence, future biomarkers, and technologies. InVivoScribe currently has six wholly owned companies in five countries. Our R&D, quality, regulatory, data analytics, and FDA registered CGMP manufacturing teams are located in the US. We have clinical reference laboratories, distribution hubs, and offer technical support at our companies in the US, Europe, Japan, and China. We have over 700 laboratory customers, more than 75 pharmaceutical partners, and we provide our products and services to more than 160 countries. Throughout our almost three decade long history, InVivoScribe is focused on standardization of our assays and our ability to provide those assays to the international community. Founded in 1995 in San Diego, InVivoScribe quickly grew as a leader in precision diagnostics, particularly in hematologic malignancies. We expanded to establish our first international location with InVivoScribe SARL in France to serve as a regional distribution, sales, and support hub. Then we grew to offer our first service capabilities, establishing clinical labs in both San Diego and Germany. In 2012, we saw the importance of gene panels with bioinformatics software and annotation. So we founded the Genexion team, which continues to be central to our bioinformatics, data analytics, and machine learning efforts. In 2015, we opened Lab PMM in Kawasaki, Japan, and in 2017 and 18, received approvals for our first two companion diagnostics with Novartis and Astellas, respectively. In 2017, we opened our Shanghai location to support pharmaceutical partners with their clinical trials and had another successful CDX approval with Daiichi Sankyo in 2019. In 2020, we expanded our presence in China to include a clinical lab which is supporting clinical trials and expects to receive CAP accreditation in the first quarter of 2023. What's important in a diagnostic ecosystem? This slide describes some of the steps required to provide an optimal diagnostic ecosystem. These interconnected areas can be summarized. Standardization, vertical integration, and the accuracy of data generation, objective interpretation, and standardized reporting. Precision diagnostics is the foundation for precision medicine. It's impossible to provide optimized treatments to patients if you don't have proper diagnosis and a way to track your patient's response. Our tests identify and track cancers literally at the molecular level. In fact, many of our tests track individual tumors within the same patient. A clinical test is most effective only when the test, interpretation of the test, and the results reporting are internationally standardized. This requires vertical integration, hence the necessity of creating a worldwide testing ecosystem. I'd like to start with the benchmark CDX for our company. The development, validation, and FDA and international approvals of our LucasStrat CDX FLT3 mutation assay. Our standardized FLT3 mutation signal ratio assay has become the worldwide standard and it is available internationally, both as a service through our clinical labs and as a kit. 
We helped three companies get three drugs approved in three years, and we continue to further expand trials to different populations to make sure that their drugs have the broadest acceptance and availability worldwide. Other tests in our current menu include the Identiclone and Lucastrat, which are on gel and capillary instruments. Lymphotrac products, which are NGS-based tests, are available for a variety of platforms. And then for MRD assessment, we have tests that can take our screening assays, whether they're gel or capillary or NGS-based assays, and increase the sensitivity for MRD assessment, which is critical in order to optimally treat patients. Now I'll provide some recent data that speaks to the relative importance of biomarker mutations in myeloid malignancies, specifically AML, or acute myeloid leukemia. It's important to point out that InVivoScribe has identified, developed, and validated tests for the most important biomarkers in acute myeloid leukemias, the most deadly leukemia. As you can see from this graphic, FLT3 and MPM1 represent the two most important biomarkers needed to properly stratify AML patients to identify the specific type of AML so that treating physicians can provide proper treatment options. The data on this slide was generated by Chris Horgan's group as part of the pre-measure studies conducted at the NIH. The data demonstrates the importance of detection of residual FLT3 ITD mutations in patients with AML. As you can see, there's meaningful difference in the relapse percent and overall survival of patients who have detectable FLT3 ITD MRD disease. Similarly, in the same studies, MPM1 was also demonstrated to be a meaningful biomarker, again with relapse rates and overall survival tied directly to the detection of residual disease using the MPM1 mutation testing. And as you can see here, we offer both these tests as services and soon in distributable kits with software to assist in the objective analysis and interpretation and reporting of these important biomarkers. One of the most recent additions to our technologies is the adoption of flow cytometry in our clinical laboratories. This is very important because it complements molecular assays and has long been the first line test for assessing measurable or minimal residual disease or MRD. Our focus and goal from the outset was to develop and validate flow cytometry panels that could be standardized globally. Standardization of flow technologies across testing centers has long been the most difficult goal to achieve. Flow cytometry requires rapid testing from fresh specimens. So we have developed these tests and plan to offer them in all four of our clinical laboratories worldwide. This will help satisfy the 72 hour specimen stability requirement of the test. We are already offering these tests in San Diego and bringing them up in our German lab. We have plans to offer them in Japan and we will have them available in Shanghai, China as soon as the first quarter of 2023. As far as the current menu we're offering for flow, we have CLIA cap validated tests with 12 color flow for AML MRD assessment, which I'll point out is one of the most difficult of all flow cytometry tests to develop and validate. We're also offering a leukemia and lymphoma screening assay and other assays are in process of being developed. All of these assays will be kitted and available in the coming years. Our flow cytometry capabilities will provide partners for the first time the ability to do both flow cytometry MRD testing and molecular MRD testing on the same samples received intramurally in any one of our four laboratories worldwide. This will make regional testing streamlined, coherent, and standardized, and we're very excited about this. Here are some of the additional applications of our current assays. First, MRD is becoming more and more important as a primary endpoint for clinical trials. So our FLT3 ITD MRD assay, our MPM1 MRD assay, our B-cell MRD assay, and our MyMRD gene panels are all important assays and technologies that will facilitate a more rapid submission and approval of drugs when MRD is deemed appropriate as a primary endpoint. Lymphotract IGH and TRB tests have applications for tracking and monitoring CAR T-cell therapy. The reason the IGH assay, which targets the immunoglobulin gene, is pertinent to CAR-T tracking 
is a single chain BDJ moiety on the cell surface of CAR T cells is sometimes engineered into the construct as one of the ligands. My MRD is a 23 gene panel for multiple biomarkers and importantly, this has applications not only in hemologic malignancies, but also in solid tumors, for example, TP53. Our gene panels and other technologies are chosen for a specific case basis for partners to match their turnaround time requirements and sample requirements. What's very exciting is we're moving to a liquid biopsy with cell-free DNA applications for our gene panels to make them more widely available with a specimen type that is easier to collect and more universally available. And we have software tools to assess and identify clinically relevant biomarkers that we see over the horizon based on data from early stage clinical trials. Let me take a moment to describe how we are pairing our bioinformatics, software, and machine learning technologies to assist our clinical labs and our partners in realizing the promise of precision medicine. Various users have different requirements for their software needs. It's very much based on the partner and the user and the institution, and so we offer a whole series of different ways to satisfy their software needs. Again, providing standardized software for the interpretation and analysis of testing. We can make it available using a variety of different tools tailor-made for the partner. Finally, I'll take this opportunity to thank the audience for their attention. Thank you.